and now we have Steve in the stage. So, okay, quickly, let me introduce you. Steve, uh, I have it here. Okay, Steve Robinson is founder and CEO of Brilliant Metrics and an instructor with the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee School of Continuing Education, I guess, right? That's correct. Cool. Cool. Your audio is cool. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm going to leave the stage for you. Relax. Yeah. You have a few seconds, and then you can just get started. Thank okay. you very much, Ruben. Thank you. I'm going to be in the you. if you need me, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank cool. you, Ruben. Bye. Well, hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is uh, Steve Robinson, as I said, or as Ruben introduced me. A little bit more about me. Um, I'm a software developer turned uh, marketer. So in the uh, last uh, few years of my uh, Last few years of my career, I shifted from being a, a geek over to the marketing side. I am the founder and CEO of Brilliant Metrics, and uh, I do like to teach. I also have three small kids that hopefully will not barge in on us here to, today. I have bribed them hopefully sufficiently. So, um, And really quick, a little bit about my agency, just to give you a little bit of background. We are primarily B2B. We consider ourselves digital first, and I will mention some non-digital tactics today. Um, and our claim to fame is that our clients rely on us to get to the next level. We're a full service agency and Modic is a huge part of what we do and we try to give back to the community every way we can. So on to evergreen content. And at a high level, today's, today's presentation is going to be a little bit theory, a little bit practice. It's sort of those weird ones that's, 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 that's not 100% not in either camp, but you should have plenty that you can take back and apply immediately. Evergreen content is reusable content. This is content that is generally not updated on a regular basis. You might refresh it once a year or so, um, maybe update the stats, update some references, make sure all your links work, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not the kind of content that has a shelf life. It's not newsjacking. It's not based on what is going on in the, in the world today. It can be relevant to multiple audiences or a very narrow niche audience. It can be relevant at more than one point in the buyer's journey. Some of it is stuff that's very top of funnel, or we call C-state. Some of it is middle of the funnel. Some of it is bottom of the funnel. The key point is it doesn't have an expiration date. So why is that important? Well, uh, if you look at marketing automation or email marketing as a whole, a lot of marketing is done in a one-to-many manner. When you launch a, an email in Modic and you click as a segment email and you're sending it out, batch and blast is the term that I hear a lot, that is a one-to-many communications. The problem with one-to-many is once that email is out, once that content is out, once you've pushed that content out, and it doesn't have to be email, it could be text, could be browser notification, it's out there and now it's done and you can't use it again in that same capacity for a while because everyone will remember it even if it wasn't applicable to them right there. With evergreen content, you can use more of a one-to-one -one marketing relationship here. So here, every person comes up, has an experience, they get the content that is specific to them and specific to their point in the journey and then they move on. You don't have to worry about reusing content as long as it's not with the same people. So if you think about it, one to many, your content is constantly changing. Your audience stays the same. One to one, your audience is changing and your content can stay the same. You don't have to keep producing a new piece of content every single week just to continue to feed the machine. The most practical way to do this in Modic is with a nurture. And so what we want to get away from is using segment emails and into using campaigns because in campaigns, you can pipe people in as they, as they hit the appropriate point in their journey, give them the content they need, and then they move on to the next piece of content. I'm a fan of, of, of Gary Vaynerchuk, if nothing else, just because of what he's built. Um, he has a book that really you probably only need to read the title of called Jab, Jab, Right Hook. And uh, 
the whole premise of the book is that you want to keep your cadence in this idea of an email nurture to value, value, and then ask. So by value, I mean this is a piece of content delivered that is 100% of value to the recipient. You're not asking for anything. You're not promoting anything. You're just trying to give value and make their world better. It can frame their thinking around your product or service, but it still needs to be of value to them. And if you keep your cadence at a two to one or a three to one ratio of value to ask or promotion, you keep your subscribers. So we talk about switching from one to, man, one to many batch and blast into one to one in the form of a nurture. We're talking about building a string of emails that come out through a campaign generally along the cadence of value, value, ask. So what does this look like in Modic? Well, this is what you end up with, and it looks pretty gnarly, but let me break it down. New contacts come in the top, and they begin the nurture. They come down through a series of emails. So here we have an email one, we have email two, email three, email four, email five, email six. Along the path, you want to keep track of status. So we use tags to keep track of who's received each email. To, and, and the key here is we want to avoid these wait steps that occur between each email. So if you look closely, you'll see there's a 14-day wait between each one of those emails. If you don't set a tag and use that tag to jump ahead, Everybody will get each one of those wait steps, even if they start the campaign, get removed from the campaign, and come back. So that's why, that's the reason for the complication. Hopefully, we'll be introducing a, a, a pull request into the community to, 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 to get past that. But for right now, you need to do that. You also want to set a status tag, a tag on your campaign to say when somebody has entered and when they've left that particular nurture. What that allows you to do is to... Um, uh, be aware of who is in which nurture when if you need to make adjustments to your campaigns. I strongly recommend that you don't put all of your emails into one big long campaign. You end up with an unmaintainable mess. When you do that, you have issues because when you need to go edit a campaign in Modic, you get that big red bar at the top that says, whoa, 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 uh, you know, unpredictable things can happen when you edit a campaign that people are in. And it's true. If you edit a campaign where there's contacts in the, in the process of going through the campaign, uh, you can end up kicking people out of your campaign, jumping them to the wrong step. It, it, it's a bad, bad thing to do. So what we do is we build each uh, each leg of the campaign one leg at a time and we'll put three to six emails in each leg and then set tags as people finish each leg and what that results in is you end up with um, criteria for each leg that says something like well we have to fit in the nurture you have to have leg one complete before you enter leg two and you can't have leg two complete to enter leg two and if you set these criteria now you can structure your nurtures into nice little legs and uh, people will pass from leg one to leg two to leg three as they complete uh, the nurture. This would be beautiful if everything that we produced was evergreen. But that's not how marketing works. Not everything can be evergreen content. Uh, if you're doing a, a good job of covering all of your bases as a marketer, you're running webinars or events. They might be a little bit more virtual these days, but you're running events. Um, you probably have some company news or some press releases that'll pop up that would, that, would, that would mean you need to do a batch and blast email. Or you may be running sales or promotions that are very time boxed and time based. Uh, if you're doing any of these things, you can't build those into a nice big long nurture like this and expect it to work because uh, you don't know when contacts are going to hit which emails in the nurture. And so the trick to uh, introducing Evergreen is you really have three options. 
if it's just an infrequent thing that comes up and you run one or two events a year or you uh, occasionally have a big piece of company news, go ahead and introduce a segment email. Throw your batch and blast email out there. I recommend that you keep, you know, say Tuesdays for your nurture emails and make Thursdays for your batch and blast so that you're at least not inundating people with two emails on the same day. If it's less frequent or if it's more frequent, but your events or your webinars are just part of your normal content stream. I found that um, uh, a plugin from Zadino Kuzmani called Twig Templates is really handy for handling this situation. What it allows you to do is you can build your evergreen content in the top of an email or in one portion of an email and then put your timely information in another portion of the same email. The timely information is maintained inside of that Twig Templates uh, template and you can change that information out as your next event comes up and your evergreen content is maintained inside of the email so you could have all of your emails referring to the same twig template bucket here and they'll go get the latest information when it's time to send uh, really great way to get around having to integrate timely information with evergreen content your third option is if you, if you need to have a dedicated email in your nurture, you can make every third email or so the same actual email, the same email ID in your nurture, and set it as a transactional email. This means that people will get that email over and over again, and you can update the content of that single email to be your timely email. So you could go blog post, video, events list, blog post, video, events list, blog post, video, events list in your nurture. And your events list email would always be the same email. You're just going to resend it. And by the time it gets sent again, you will have updated it with a new list of events. Same concept as Twig templates, but in this case, you're not replacing a small chunk of the email with something that's timely. You're replacing the whole email with something that's timely. So up until now, we've been talking about one big nurture, maybe broken up into legs. That works really well for your broadly applicable, valuable content to your audience. But it doesn't respond to where your audience is in their buyer's journey. Because if you recall, at the beginning, we talked about evergreen content can be broadly applicable to the whole journey, or it can be very specific to top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. And that's where specific nurtures come in. Before we can get into specific nurtures, we need to figure out how do we know what people are interested in? How do we, how do we tailor this content to where they are in the buyer's journey and what they're interested in? And um, the answer here, again, is modic tags. So what we have found to be hugely successful is to use a combination of Google Tag Manager and the tagging capability built right into modic to track people's interests and uh, engagements in your assets and your website. So uh, what you can do is simply load a, a small image tag inside of Google Tag Manager. If you're not a Google Tag Manager expert, go find one. Just say, I want to load a, an image tag in here. And you can pass in, instead of the, 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 the page URL, you're going to pass in some sort of a phrase that you're going to look for in Modic. And you're going to pass in the tags that you want to add. And by configuring your tag just like this, you'll end up actually appending a tag to that contact, anonymous or known, inside a modic. This allows you to now diverge their experience. So they're going to get a very different experience in modic if they have this tag and sets you up to do a more specific nurture. You generally want to pull people out of your general nurture, the default one that we talked about earlier, if they're in a specific nurture. So somebody gets, uh, let's, let's use a, a hypothetical scenario of a, 
uh, car dealership here. Somebody uh, uh, is in the general nurture of the car dealership, and they come and they start looking at minivans. And because they're looking at vans, uh, we're going to put them in a specific nurture about vans and start telling them about all of the van features and benefits and uh, uh, special reasons why you want to buy your van from us. We want to pull them out of that default traffic because we don't want to be inundating them with content. So to do that, uh, we want to exclude anyone from our general nurture who is not who is who is in a specific nurture and then include them in a specific nurture based on that interest modic tag that we set using our uh, Google Tag Manager tag. So I'm in a specific interest nurture. Now uh, what does that look like? Well it's a little bit simpler because here we don't we don't have to track every single email if I'm in here, I'm going to stay in here until I finish. I'm not going to come out and leave, unlike the general nurture, where if, uh, if, I, come out, if I enter something more specific, I want to be pulled out of that. Here, I'm going to stay in, so we don't have to track every single email. We just have to flow them through, getting topic one, wait a few days, topic two, wait a few days, topic three, wait a few days, topic four. All evergreen content, all focused around that specific interest. And the nice thing is, if you get out of the business of building a consistent flow of news, 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 exciting new post, exciting new post, you can go deeper into these um, further down the funnel topics area, content areas, and build deeper, richer content here. And then you can accelerate the cadence at which you're delivering that content and maybe only put seven days or five days or three days or even a couple of days depending on your audience between each one of these to get that content in the hands of somebody who is further down the funnel a little bit faster because they're warmer they're more interested in hearing from you by setting a tag when they enter you can exclude them from your general nurture like we showed and by setting a tag when they exit, you can make sure that they don't come back in, which can be important if you don't want them repeating the same journey just because they went and visited the same pages again later. So putting it all together here, you have a wide variety of sources coming into your site. You could have new webinar attendees, you could have newsletter signups, you could have other new names, maybe some gated content, uh, uh, trade shows or events, a wide variety of people coming in. Once they enter, they enter that general nurture. Here is evergreen content after evergreen content after evergreen content. And again, I highly recommend you follow some sort of a, a, a cadence of, of jab, jab, right hook, or value, value promotion, value, value, promotion. Ideally, some of that value or some of that promotion drives them into areas on your website that indicate to you that they're ready for a specific nurture. And so a tag and tag manager fires and it adds a modic tag, not to confuse the word tag, but um, that modic tag says that they're in the market for a specific product or service. They jump out of that general nurture and come in here and execute your specific nurture. Once they've executed that specific nurture, they come back out and they jump right back to where they were in the general nurture. And that's made possible because you're setting a tag at each point that somebody hits a, a particular, uh, receives a particular email. So you can jump them right back to where they belong. They flow through that general nurture until they engage with some other content on your site to indicate that they're, in, they're ready for another specific nurture. And when that happens, you jump them off here and then bring them back. If you're doing this along with lead scoring, you're giving your prospects that much more opportunity to ratchet up their score because you're giving them more and more of the content that is specific to them but you're not having to constantly build more and more content because the content that you build sits in the machine until somebody is ready for it for that specific nurture 
or as new people come in, they, they, they work their way through. You might have one year or two years worth of content in here, and then they, they, they could just exit because at that point, if they're not a customer, they're not going to be a customer. Or you strip everybody's tags off of what legs they've completed, and they all start over at the beginning because two years down the road, they've forgotten everything. And as long as you're refreshing this content as you go along, uh, the, um, uh, they're not going to remember that they received this email two years ago. And it works really well. That's the basic gist of it. But let's talk about how much further we can take this concept. You're not just limited in Modic to email. You can also integrate text messages if it's appropriate for your industry and region. Uh, different markets uh, have different appreciation of text messages right now. Um, the web notifications through one signal and being able to fire that content, all of that can fit within a campaign and be very applicable to a particular target audience. You can also introduce direct mail, especially inside of your specific nurtures. We found this to be very, very helpful. There are a number of uh, uh, providers out there that will let you integrate with uh, Modic through a webhook or through Zapier or through one of the other similar automation platforms to um, to fire off a direct mail piece, uh, like a postcard. That's a great way if you've got uh, a physical location to get people into it or uh, to um, possibly uh, promote a meeting or get a, uh, a, a further engagement that way. In addition to adding other channels, uh, the other thing you can introduce here is website personalization. So take that evergreen content and now add a dynamic web content component to your to your campaigns. So now um, individuals that are in a particular nurture are not only getting uh, content via email or via text message or notification, but they're also, when they visit the website, the most relevant content to them is surfacing up through website personalization. And then finally, include sales. You're probably developing some marketing collateral for them anyway, which will probably align with a lot of the specific nurture stuff. So um, go ahead and set up a, a, a point in your, uh, in your specific nurture to fire off an alert to the salesperson to reach out and make an outbound phone call or email or LinkedIn request and engage them in the process as well. Once you've built this framework of getting away from batch and blast and, and segments uh, to a consistent nurture framework supported by evergreen content, you're able to enhance and go outside of just, a, just an email medium and actually engage human to human mediums as well. So, In summary here, and I'm going to dive off a little bit and talk a little bit about a couple of other best practices, um, bringing it back to theory, because I went a little bit faster than expected. Uh, you want to put as little effort into time-sensitive content as possible, because that content, once it's distributed, is now expired. It's, 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 its value plummets. If you build evergreen content that doesn't require maintenance, or requires limited maintenance, putting that content out there, it, uh, it only accrues value over time as more and more eyeballs see it. Put your content into a nurture, which is a structure of multiple campaigns inside of Modic. And then you're not going to get completely away from Batch and Blast because you're still going to have events or promotions or things that you need to do very timely. Uh, so use a combination of the occasional batch and blast email if it's if it's relatively infrequent, um, twig templates or dedicated reused emails if it's more frequent uh, uh, time sensitive co communications to integrate that into your nurtures so that you're not you're not fighting with this whole concept of a nurture every time you have something uh, timely to announce. 
tag manager is your friend when it comes to tracking people's interests and where they're at in the um, in their journeys so that you can dive them down particular nurtures that are specific to them and then uh, create those specific nurtures for each uh, particular interest whatever they're interested in and then populate those with appropriate content for that that interest area and then finally we talked about extending this framework to other mediums um, I'm going to diverge from the slides here, so if you want to pop me up full screen for a moment, I'll talk a little bit about some other best practices. Oh, me, not the slides, full screen. Um, the, uh, uh, a lot of marketers struggle with this concept for a couple of reasons. One, um, we're so used to trying to capitalize on a news cycle and, and get new content, new content, new content. It's a big mind shift. And two, you need some sort of model for figuring out what content to produce and then how often do you go back and update it. Uh, we have found that having an editorial calendar is absolutely imperative to any successful move to an evergreen content because you need to be able to have, and it can be a simple spreadsheet, that details out which content you have and then which interests or points in the buyer's journey or audiences you've built content for and then where it might fit into a nurture or a cadence and if you have those things set up as columns and then each individual piece of content as a row it allows you to in a pretty straightforward manner maintain uh, 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 sort of command and control over over all of your evergreen assets um, an important column in there is a last update date because even the best evergreen assets do get a little bit long in the tooth. Maybe we dropped that product this year or uh, maybe that link broke or maybe uh, there is a new statistic and the statistic that's in embedded in that white paper is, is pretty long in the tooth. So you're going to want to regularly review and audit old assets as well which can work really well for SEO um, uh, as far as uh, uh, identifying which ones um, have the most traffic on the search side and can really work really well for email optimization as well. And finally, another best practice we didn't talk about was A-B testing. I want to flip Ruben back to the, uh, the slides here. When you're building out this nurture, you'll want to make sure each one of these emails is an A-B test. What's different with Evergreen from Batch and Blast A-B testing is uh, it's going to take a lot longer for you to get a statistically valid result on that particular email, but if you're reviewing everything annually, you can go back and look at your A-B tests once a year to go and see whether A or B won and what insights you can garner from that to go and improve your Evergreen strategy overall. It, it takes longer, it's a lot of effort, but it's definitely worth it. So, with that, I think we'll flip things over to questions, but before we do that, I do want to invite everybody here uh, who's watching this to please feel free to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm trying to be more active on the Modic Slack community as well, so you might see me there or in the Modic forums, but um, please let me know if you have any questions that come to mind after this. You're also free to email me as well. With that, uh, um, I'll invite Ruben back in. Yes, jumping in. Great session. Really interesting tips and tricks. Really cool. And we have questions. So one from the Mautic uh, fan. How do you prevent contacts from getting multiple specific nurtures at the same time? Uh. So when you're building these uh, uh, specific nurtures that people go down as they engage with content, uh, it's, it's pretty common that, that um, marketers will get worried that, that you're going to inundate someone because now they're interested. They, clicked at, they looked at minivans. They also looked at uh, uh, sports, co sports cars, right? Because they wish they had the sports car and not the minivan. Uh, in that instance, they could end up getting nurtured down both paths. 
uh, in reality, we haven't found huge issues with people getting multiple specific nurtures. We haven't found that that causes a lot of unsubscribes. We haven't found that that causes a, a, a low open rate. Um, if you're seeing a, a lot of issues with that, then you can start to prioritize your specific nurtures and say, well, if they're in this one, then exclude them from this one. And if they're in this one or this one, then exclude them from this one and start to start to set them up in, in sort of a priority order. And then use uh, uh, rules inside of those segments to say, well, you can't be in both of these at the same time. Oh, makes sense, definitely. Cool. And um, we have another one. Why use Stack Manager? Why not just set up segments and campaigns uh, based on web visits to fire your specific nurtures? Yeah. Um, in some instances, uh, uh, so Tag Manager has a lot more complexity in its rules than Mauda can have in it. So you can set up some really complicated rules to determine when somebody should get a particular interest tag assigned to their, their record. For example, we usually don't fire those interest tags unless somebody has scrolled on a page or clicked on something. Because just visiting a page on sports cars doesn't mean I can actually buy one. Um, but if I scroll and I click on things, then that, that, that's a pretty clear indication that I'm actually interested at that point. Um, that said, having some supporting campaigns in Modic, if I'm engaging with assets or if um, uh, I attend an event or a webinar, those should also be triggers to add that interest tag and drive, drive people down a particular specific nurture. Uh, it doesn't have to all be in Tag Manager, but Tag Manager is a great tool for uh, really uh, controlling who ends up getting those very specific interest tags. Actually, you know, Tag Manager does pretty well to track conversions like actions, right? Like mm -hmm. click, or bumper, but Mautic does the same, right? So as you mentioned, you know, it's, it's about you to decide what kind of conversion is relevant. Just clicking on a landing page and go visiting the landing page and closing the tab, that's not a conversion. Maybe just right. an error by mistake and you just don't want to see it. But if you just click and then you scroll and you click somewhere in the page, then that's a real conversion, right? Exactly. And, and uh, the, the pixel is so convenient for integrating with Tag Manager, there's not nearly enough uh, documentation out there on the web. I should do more writing about how to use those two things together. But you can you can really uh, really get granular on what you end up pushing into Modic from from your website in ways that you can't write from within the tools. So um, Modic gives you a great set of tools built in, and then you can you can give it superpowers with Tag Manager. <laughs> Yeah, and one, one question from my side. Uh, um, I mean, uh, at the moment, you know, Mautic is the is the owner of your content, right? And your assets, your everything. You know, they compare with a uh, Google Tag Manager and so on. It's like uh, they don't own anything. You know, they are just tracking and you know connecting the dots. But you know, actually, Mautic is more powerful because you have your content to push it or your assets, but not only that, you have personalized web content as well, meaning yes. that you can also, you know, push the specific content for the specific segment uh, of, uh, of your visitors, right? Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So I guess, uh, ah, there is one, one, yes, just one question in the last second. Uh, from Danko, when doing A-B tests with evergreen content, what do you mm -hmm. test first? Uh, what do you compare? Oh, yes. Uh, usually, um, I think it depends on the email. When you're building the email, you'll usually uh, have, a, have a gut feeling about whether or not the subject line is going to be, uh, you're going to nail the subject line and you're going to end up getting, uh, uh, and you're confident on the subject line or you're confident in the call to action, right? And so you know which one of those is, is the better better one to test. If you don't 
I, I generally err on the side of caution with the subject line test because if you if nobody's opening your email, they're not going to get any further than that. So um, if you if you aren't sure, test the subject line, but otherwise use your gut. I'd also caution you: don't test more than one thing in the content. Uh, I've seen a lot of A/B tests where marketers will swap out the whole whole copy, whole body of the email, and and yes, you get a, a more likely to have a, a different result, but you didn't learn anything. You learned nothing about what 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 uh, what was the value to your 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 audience. And so, um, changing out some key things within the body, calls to action are always a very good thing to change and test. Uh, and uh, changing uh, headlines or uh, titles to content or lead in, you know, like what, what you're calling that piece of content and how you're conveying the value is also a very important thing to test within the content. But don't try to test everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Definitely split up, split up your tests, even though with Evergreen, it's much slower to test those. <laughs> well, I have a follow-up question regarding the same, the same topic. Is uh, like headlines or you know email subjects with or without emo emojis? Oh. If your brand can take emojis, you will love the lift in 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 open rates you'll get from emojis. Uh, it, but if your brand is really formal and you know conservative and and kind of stodgy, you can't you can't force emojis in there. It's not on brand. But if your brand could take them, oh wow, they do work wonders. Definitely works. Really well. <laughs> cool. I have seen people using emojis even in in comment messages in repositories and so on. I mean, they're pretty handy. Seriously, visual representation of elements or you know concepts. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, and they, add, they add personality and they draw your eye to that particular piece of content too. Yeah. So yeah, it's content. I mean, emojis are content. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, looks like there are no more questions. So okay. I can only say thank you, Steve. Again, uh, really, really good thank presentation. You. Uh, I apologize for talking so fast at the beginning and getting us so far ahead. <laughs> that, that happens. Sometimes you say, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going to have enough time. Then you speed up and then you realize, oh, <laughs> I don't. No problem. Right. Well, thank you, Ruben, for all of your help. Good. And enjoy this one session more and the closing session. So how you can make it and you know, stay with us. I will be around in the networking section if anybody wants to, to hit me up for any questions there as well. So thank you. Definitely. Thank you, Steve. Take care. Bye-bye.